What is up, wrestling fans? k Pape Chronicles with your host, JP. Well, Great Balls of Fire is in the books. Pure Bali Madness happened tonight. What happened? I'm about to cover it all. So let's get the review going. As usual, I missed most of the pre-show because my night does not begin until 6.45. But I was able to catch the last few minutes of the Cruiserweight match. And from what I saw, it, it looked actually pretty good. I'm just going to speed right to the end because that's really all I saw. Uh, some low blow madness happening. Neville uh, got the low blow in when the referee wasn't looking. Was able to get the pinfall. He retains his title. But since this is great balls of fire, you know there's going to be a lot of ball stuff happening. So let's get the dick counter and the ball counter at one. Opening off the show, we got Seth Rollins taking on Bray Wyatt. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, really weren't interested in this matchup. A lot of us kind of figured, like, okay, you know, whatever. It's going to be your standard Bray Wyatt. You know, few talks a lot of crap, fights the guy, loses, on to the next feud. Um, overall, though, the match was actually pretty decent. Uh, you know, both of them looked really good with one another. Uh, they did hit a lot of a lot of decent moves back and forth. Uh, said, you know, for, for a match, they both they both pretty much gave it their all. I'm just going to jump right ahead to the ending, uh, which was, which was kind of cool. Uh, Bray Wyatt was outside the ring, uh, tussling with Seth. Uh, he manages to poke Seth Rollins in the eye with his thumb. Comes in, hits Sister Abigail, and he wins. Uh, which completely threw me for a loop. I did not see Bray Wyatt winning this one, really. Like, you know, I predicted he would win. But in my mind, I was thinking, like, well, well no, it's going to be a standard Bray Wyatt thing. So it's cool. Yay, I got my prediction right. But, uh, but yeah, like, yeah, that that's awesome. Like, that's awesome that he might even continue it. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah, he hit him in the eyeball, though. And some badness happening. Coming up next, we got the Blood Brother feud match between Big Cass taking on his former friend Enzo. The video package, pff, holy crap, it was amazing. Like, if WWE focused as much as they do with the video packages as they do for, like, the actual show, they would be the best show on television. Uh, so, yeah, Enzo comes out. Cuts his usual Enzo promo, but this promo I actually was actually good. If, you know, it wasn't just him talking out of his butt. You know, I, I listened. I was like, "Wow, that's actually really deep." He got me right in the feels. You know, he referred that you know what's going on. They compared it to a Frank Sinatra song. I, I don't know the song that well per se, uh, but it was really heartfelt, really good. And then he like pointed out, like, you know, you know, old blue eyes. Well, I'm I'm young blue eyes. And then the camera zooms into Enzo's face to verify that he has blue eyes. I'm on to you. Uh, but yeah, it was a real good promo. And then, of course, Cass comes out with his new generic Juice Pig music. And then the camera guy just hates Big Cass. Yeah. Just look at those letters. Oh, but he doesn't stop there. Oh, big Cass, big Cass. You're like, I, I see what they're doing with you, but it's just, it's weird. Uh, but overall, the match was exactly as we predicted. Total squash match. He just beat the living crap out of Enzo. Gets the easy three. Um, you know, we know the feud's going to continue. Like, you know, is Enzo going to find a new big guy to fight his battles? Is he going to train harder to beat Cass? Who the hell knows? But I I'm glad that they didn't end with Enzo winning and ending it. That would have just been... Coming up next, we have Iron Man tag team match between the Hardy Boys taking on Shizaro. Uh, you know, so much going on on this match. Like, I'm just gonna not even tell you. Match of the night, hands down, freaking amazing. Mm, everything about it. Uh, some of the key points for me uh, right off the beginning, there's a quick distraction. Matt gets distracted, like I just said. He gets hit with a broke kick. Uh, Shizaro's up one nothing. Uh, there's another point later on. They get the next fall. You know, like Jeff's getting two on one, two on one, two on one. Every time he tries to tag Matt, Matt gets knocked out of the ring or something. Uh, they manage to get the second fall, so they're up two nothing. Uh, Hardy's finally get a fall when they hit all their signature moves. Uh, you know, poetry, motion, side effect, uh, twist of fate. They get the thing. 
Uh, there's a lot of delete chants, which is really great. Like Matt did a lot of his, you know, delete. You know, he's hitting his head on the turnbuckles. He went down all the turnbuckles, hits the guy's head all over the stairs. It was really cool. Uh, there was a couple bullcrap points. Like there was a point where like uh, Cesaro gets him in the sharpshooter. Jeff comes in, makes the save, and then he hits him with a twist of fate. And it's like one, two, three. The referee actually hits the three. You can hear the three. And then, like, a full second later, you know, the, the pin gets broken up. And they're like, oh, no, it was only a two count. Yet, everyone saw it was a three. The refs, you suck, chance starts happening. But then right after that, he hits him with a twist of fate off the top rope. Gets the fall. Uh, there was just a lot of madness. Uh, uh, the Hardy Boys had this really cool pinning combination near the end. Where, like, Cesaro, C sorry, Cesaro tries to go in for a European uppercut. He gets locked into a backslide. Gets the hot tag. Jeff does this cool leg drop thing to hook the legs down. Uh, that ties it up. Uh, there's some other falls. I don't even know what the hell happened. There's just so many notes I can't even explain because I was just so enthralled with how beautiful this match was. Uh, but pretty much the ending happens. There's less than a minute left. Uh, uh, Sheamus gets clotheslined down by the uh, ring ape, uh, down by the, the edge of the ropes. Uh, Jeff Hardy gets the blind tag. Does the swanton bomb, but Sheamus isn't the legal man, that's right. For some reason, Cesaro was. I don't even remember him getting tagged in. Uh, Cesaro jumps in, tags Jeff for the three count. Uh, there's under ten seconds left. Jeff chases Cesaro around the ring, uh, gets him back in the ring, hits him with the twist of fate, but there's not enough time left for them to tie it up. Uh, so Cesaro retains the title, and yet for some more reason, they zoom the camera into Matt, and he's just pouring blood. I don't even remember when he got hit and started bleeding, but overall, that match was just... Just the crowd ate every second of it. It was it was great. If you haven't seen, if you're only going to watch one match in this pay-per-view, I fully recommend that one match. Give yourselves a treat. Check that match out. Immediately following, we got the Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss defending up against Sasha Banks. Uh, of course, Sasha makes her entrance, and... Uh, this this camera guy is just purposely looking for this. Uh, overall, like the, the match, there was a couple cool spots. Uh, I just feel really bad for the ladies that they had to come in immediately after that epic tag team match. Uh, it's all in the matter of the bookings, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's a spot where like Alexa Bliss pops her arm out of the socket. And she's all standing there's like, oh my god, she broke her arm. And even like Sasha's like, oh no, I didn't mean to. Boom, gets hits her in the face. The thing I didn't like is that like every like all the commentators are like, oh, I've never seen this before. Oh, she's double jointed. She's done it before on SmackDown. How is this something new? I can understand that some of the fans might have not seen it because they might not have time to watch all the shows. But the WWE commentators and the referees and even Sasha Banks should know. Bleh. That she's double jointed and she's done this before. Ugh. Uh, overall, though, like the, the match was pretty good. Uh, Sasha got her locked into the bank statement at one point, held her for a really long time, but uh, Alexa was able to get the rope break. They fight a little bit more, and then just near the end, just Alexa says, "Screw it." She finds a way out of the ring, gets counted out. So Sasha Banks wins the match, but champion's advantage. Alexa retains. So Alexa's on her way out, celebrating. No, nope, Sasha ain't having none of that crap. Sasha comes down, beats the living crap out of them. There's a couple good uh, uh, high count, like high ramp spots. Like you, you know that this is leading to SummerSlam where they're gonna have like a false count anywhere match or a last woman standing match. Like NXT had Asuka taking on Nikki Cross in a last woman standing match, probably as a test to see if it'd work, and that match was amazing. So let's try it on the main roster. But yeah, yeah, you know this feud's far from over, far, far, far from over. Coming up next, we have the IC Championship. Dean Ambrose taking on The Miz. I'm not going to lie. I actually didn't even pay attention. I was actually sitting here practicing card tricks. Why? Because I've seen them fight a million times, and I don't care. I, I don't. I like The Miz. Uh, Dean's pretty boring now. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't pay attention. All I saw is that The Miz won. Uh, the Miztourage is weird. Curtis Axel's in his suit, and Bo Dallas looks like he's some, like, hippie roadie. I don't know, but yeah, Miz won. Whatever. On to the next thing. Coming up next, we have the ambulance match. Braun Strowman taking on Roman Reigns. 
Uh, once again, awesome video package. God damn it, WWE, your editing is so beautiful. Uh, Braun comes out, huge pop. Roman comes out, tons of booze as always. Camera guy gets his ball shot. Um, overall, like the the match itself was who am I kidding? It was freaking awesome. Like, like Braun just dominated the entire match. Probably like eighty percent of the match, he was just kicking Roman Reigns' ass. Uh, he's hitting him with everything he can in the ring. Uh, near the end, of course, they finally make their way up to the ramp, and now Roman kind of puts in some offense. Uh, Roman managed to throw Braun Strowman through the LED screen. All I'm thinking about is how much did that possibly cost? Just tons of money. That's probably worth more than I make in like 50 years. Um, you know, like, yeah, he hits him a couple more times, gets him down by the door. Uh, Roman Reigns runs to spear. Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman just sidesteps him. Roman Reigns goes right into the ambulance, shuts the door. Braun Strowman wins. As stupid as that ending sounds, like, you know, they're thinking, well, how about we just do it where he steps out of the way? Like, as comedic as that sounds, it actually worked. It made so much sense. Uh, however, when Braun Strowman was celebrating, uh, Roman Reigns comes out, uh, beats up Braun Strowman, hits him in with the ambulance door a couple times, pushes him into the ambulance, and then drives backstage. And then he just kind of stands there and just, like, looks and starts thinking like you know you see his face in the rearview mirror and all I'm thinking is like ah oh, no like I bet you the Undertaker is going to come out or some stupid crap like that because there was the rumor that Undertaker might be coming back to fight to fight Roman Reigns at SummerSlam which is no don't do it it's a stupid idea like like Undertaker you had your farewell at WrestleMania it was beautiful and like another thing like at the beginning of the match uh, Michael Cole was like, you know, like, oh, you know, Roman Reigns might have ended the career of the Undertaker. No, no, he did not. My, he did, he did, and I'm okay with that. I am happy with that. Just no, bleh. but no, pretty much he sits there and he thinks, and then what does he end up doing? He backs uh, the ambulance up. He rams into the back of a semi truck, gets out, walks away. Even though he just committed attempted murder, technically speaking. Uh, Kurt Angle, Jamie Noble, a bunch of security guards and crap run out there. Uh, They're trying to pry the door open to get Braun Strowman out. Uh, they can't. So while all this is going on, an impromptu match happens between Kurt Hawkins and Heath Slater. And we get about five seconds of that, and then it cuts right back to the ambulance. Uh, where the real ambulance shows up to save Braun from the ambulance, so you get double ambulance going. Uh, and while this is going on, you hear Lillian Garcia announce your winner, Heath Slater. G great, I'm so glad they had those two guys come out. Uh, so yeah, they finally pry the door open. Braun Strowman comes out just covered in blood. Like, his face is mangled. He's got blood dripping from his arm. And my thing is, like, this is PG era. and That's, like, two mass bloody things. Like... Yeah, you know, Welcome Back Blood, but it's weird because the pay-per-view used to be called Bad Blood, but Vince changed it because he didn't want blood in the title, but yet we're going to have blood. It's just too much to process. But yeah, Braun Strowman walks away. Like, you know, he's like, I don't want medical attention. I'm Braun Strowman. You know, he, it, it just shows, like, how powerful the, the Braun Strowman is, uh, which is great because, you know, it's kind of the double turn, which is awesome. Because like, like, if that doesn't make Roman Reigns a heel, I have no clue what will. Like, does he have to, like, murder, a, like, a baby on screen or something like that for them to finally flip him? Uh, but, yeah, like, I'm pretty sure that he's now the heel. Braun Strowman's the face. The world is a happy place. Great way to end that match. And now we're closing off with the world championship match between... Brock Lesnar defending against Samoa Joe. And there's only two minutes left in this pay-per-view. And there's another video package. <laughs> so all I'm thinking is like, ah, Christ on a cracker. Like, oh, great, it's going to be a squash match. Uh, Samoa Joe comes out to his thing, you know. Audience is eating it up. Brock Lesnar comes out. Uh, Paul Heyman's about to do his shtick when Joe just jumps Brock Lesnar from behind, throws him through a table, Match hasn't even started yet, and Brock Lesnar's already gotten the shit kicked out of him, which is great. Uh, Brock Lesnar's, like, in the ring beating up, motions for the match to start. Joe runs in there, starts freaking kneeing him, elbowing him, throwing everything he's got. But no, I'm Brock Lesnar, bitches. 
Uh, Suplex City, that's right, he manages to get a second win, starts chucking Joe around. But Joe's not having any of that. Joe manages to get his ground again, tries to lock in the Coquina Clutch. Uh, Brock manages to escape, picks him up into an F5. Joe manages to escape. Uh, he throws Brock Lesnar into the ring post, tries to lock in the Coquina Clutch again. He kind of crawls under his legs, does a couple more uh, suplexes and crap. But no, Joe manages to get yet another second win. Locks in the Coquina again. This time he has him in the center of the ring. Brock's fading. Brock's fading. Brock's fading. No, picks him up, hits him with the F5, and gets the win. Which makes little to no sense. Um, the thing I liked about the end, though, is that, you know, Brock's leaving, celebrating, and Joe's just standing there, like, looks like nothing happened. He's just staring down Brock Lesnar, which is which is a really good look. Trust me, it's a good look for, for Joe. Because normally when someone takes an F5, that's it. They're obliterated, they're dead, they're done. But, like, the fact that Joe pretty much looked at Brock saying, like, you got a lucky shot in, I'm not done with you yet, is a real strong look uh, for Brock, because he's able to counter the Coquina Clutch, but a real strong look for Joe showing that, that you know, he has, you know, he's not finished with Brock Lesnar. Because normally whenever Brock Lesnar's done with somebody, that's it, it's over. So I'm looking forward to seeing where that feud goes. It holds a lot of water. Which is awesome. I like holding water. And there was probably some nut shots in that match. I don't even know. There was definitely nut shots in the tag match. There was definitely nut shots in the ambulance match. So let's just say that every match had some nut shots. Every match had a nut shot. Uh, except for the women's match. That would be really, really weird. But yeah, overall, overall, a fairly good pay-per-view. Uh, considering that it had the weirdest name ever in the history, and it's a Raw pay-per-view, I think they did very well. Uh, I think they set up some really good feuds, some really good progressing storylines. Hopefully they wrapped up the Dean Ambrose Miz storyline, because pff, that was going nowhere. But yeah, good job, Raw. Really thoroughly enjoyed myself. So many balls! And there you guys have it. What did you think about Great Balls of Fire? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, crush that like button and subscribe for more great videos. Follow us on Twitter using the two name tags below. And also check out that Facebook page. As usual, this is JP from Kayfabe Chronicles. And you make sure to eat those balls. And I will see you next time.